Outubro foi um mês movimentado no RuneScape. E como sempre, a comunidade está cheia de comentários e perguntas. Modmark deu uma conferida no fórum para poder esclarecer as dúvidas de vocês sobre a nova missão, a nova armadura, as novas árvores e, claro, a maratona de reconstrução de Longbridge que vem aí. Okay, so let's then start off with some missing presumed death questions. Sure. Uh, what race is, is death? Well, it's interesting this answer actually. I wasn't sure myself at first, uh, so I had a bit of a chat with Ollie and Dave, and uh, it seems that death is human. Death is in fact the first person or the first thing ever to die on Gillenor, and became death in the process. How long did it actually take to make the quest from start to finish, from the moment that you sat in a room and said, okay, let's make missing presumed death to, to da -da, here it is. Well, from the point that we handed the Coraines to Ollie uh, to actually releasing it, it's about five months. So, in total, uh, Ollie put about 450 man hours into the project. The project involved working with between one and 20 other people for the period of five months, and then uh, and that tended to vary depending on which point in the project that we were in. At the beginning, it tends to just be one or two people working on the, on the um, design of the project. Then once we've got graphics and testing going on, there's easily 20 or even more people involved with the project then. So um, just Ollie on his own, 450 hours. Um, but in total, would have been many, many thousands. So let's move on to, uh, to yeah. the range armour. Okay. So, so this was a completely different looking armour. Yes. Um, at the start of the month you mentioned about how it was going to be um, armour made of the skin of a beast that's yet to be introduced to RuneScape. That's right. Okay, so Martin didn't actually tell us very much about that in the behind the scenes last week. So can you kind of fill in the gaps a little bit? Uh, no, I can't. Oh, really? No. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. In that case, then, can you tell us if there's any lore that's related to the armour? It would be nice to do a little bit more uh, backstory, particularly involving the Ascension Dungeon and um, Ocelius. I can't remember his name. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, the big guy outside the front of the Ascension Dungeon. There's a lot more backstory I'd like to do with him, particularly. Okay, so you can save yourself by telling us then whether it's going to be um, um, degradable armour or if it's going it to... It will be, yeah. yeah it, will, it will function in the same way as the level 90 mage equipment. Okay, cool. All right, then let's move swiftly on into the Rebuildathon. So this is um, replacing... Um, perhaps a more traditional kind of Halloween event that we've kind of seen in the past. You said you yes, wanted to kind right. of like do something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, is that going to be like a theme that we can see in future with other kind of holiday content or, or is this a bit of a one-off? It depends really. Um, I guess I want our holiday celebrations to be more runescape -y. I just think we've got such a rich world inside Gillenor that it's often a shame to do too much stuff that's kind of too real world related. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking to have a nice mix of the two rather than do something typically Eastery or typically Halloween-y. So another update that happened this month that we didn't talk about last uh, at the start of the month was the prestige system. Yes. So currently there's a poll going on at the moment That's to see right. whether people really, really want to see it. What was the thinking behind doing the poll? Well, basically we really wanted to get the feedback from the players. We have th thought for a while that we really wanted to come up with new aspirational content. The current idea, the prestige idea, was a, really a, a different way of kind of realising bigger, kind of longer term aspirational goals. And obviously that was just one version that the players didn't particularly like. Okay. And there's all sorts of good reasons and we're getting some fantastic feedback and that's really why we've done it. Not only to run the vote, um, but also to get players talking and get players thinking and give us ideas of, okay, if that's not what you do want, what, what is it that you like? And we've had loads of feedback about, well, I kind of like the, the prestige system, but not for these reasons. I'm always looking to, make changes to the game for the right reasons and with the support of the players. So that's really why we did it. We definitely want to run more polls. Um, I'm already talking to uh, the teams about how we can run more polls about the content that we want to do next year. I would be 100% sure that we'll see more polls like this in the future. So I think we've got a little bit of time left. So we have a, a few more general questions because obviously, you know, people want to know more than just what's been going on in October. They want to know okay. They want to know everything. All right. Okay, so is the next Battle of Lumbridge going to be as bloody and stabby as the Zami and Sara one? There isn't going to be another Battle of Lumbridge, mm -hmm. but there will be another world event, and it will be a lot more brutal. When do you think we might get to see the first glimmers of, of what's coming? Well, um, we are intending to have some playable versions of some of the content at RuneFest. 
Well, okay, that was a totally unplanned plug, another plug, <laughs> by the way, but, but yeah, fair enough. Okay, cool. The Dwarf Quest competition obviously got the yeah. community really sort of heavily involved in actually kind of contributing to that content yes. and determining how it actually came out in the end. Yep. Um, is there more stuff like that planned Lots for the future? More. That was really a kind of uh, guinea pig test for us to see how much players wanted to get involved and what kind of influences we could um, we could get from the players. Um, we did all sorts of things. We got them into the office. We did loads of different competitions, like you've said. I want to do a lot more of it. There's, there's a real appetite for um, from the players to get more involved with the development of our content, and we want to do a lot more of it. Okay, so I've got a question here from, uh, from Fanny Girdle. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, they would like to know, <laughs> can you ask him about the plans for the post burst writer, the Dwarves content that Mod John A has talked about, planned for October? Um, John's been working on it this week and we'll be adding it to the game shortly. Okay, are there any uh, player-owned ports updates coming anytime soon? There is indeed, and uh, I'll be talking more about that at RuneFest. Okay, and here's a good one that, that got a lot of uh, favour on, on Twitter, which was, did Sliske actually find the Stone of Jazz, or was this just part of his manipulative tactic against the gods? Well, that's a very good question. That, that's the, oh, that's a really good one. I hope to hear this one answered. There you, you go. You, you'll have to wait and see. Oh, no. Okay. Novembro está chegando e na semana que vem, Mark está de volta para contar aos bastidores o que vem por aí no próximo mês.